So if she leaves, where do we stand on Brexit? I asked Niall Gardner, director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. By the way, he is pro-Brexit and anti-May. What is the status of Brexit? Well, Brexit is still on course for October 31st. That's the official uh, date for Brexit that is set by the European Union. Uh, and Britain will either leave with a deal or without a deal on October 31st. So the legal default position is for Britain to, to leave under a no-deal scenario unless the British government gets parliamentary approval uh, for the withdrawal agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, uh, Theresa May, the Prime Minister, is struggling to get parliamentary approval for her withdrawal bill. Uh, and I think that uh, certainly Britain at the moment is heading towards a trajectory which takes it down the no-deal uh, path for October the 31st. Is it any better to do a second referendum and just put it to Parliament? Would they be overriding, in a sense, um, what tens of millions of people in the UK said? Well, no, I mean, Parliament cannot overrule the decision taken here by the British, uh, the British people. I okay. think Theresa May is talking about a second vote uh, that would be put uh, to the whole country. Uh, but uh, whether or not there's a second vote, uh, she's offering Parliament a say on that. This goes against everything that she has promised in the past. I mean, she has strongly opposed, rightly so, a second referendum. The second referendum uh, would be, uh, you know, a slap in the face for everyone who voted for Brexit already. It seems like Theresa May is in a particularly poor position because among her, what would seem would be her allies, they are not happy with her. And then there's, what, 48 plus percent of the country that wants to stay in the EU, right, or about 48. And uh, her opponents in Parliament, they're saying, let's stay. And so how long can she actually stay in office? Uh, well, I think that, um, you know, her days are numbered as prime minister. I expect that she'll certainly be out by the end of the summer, okay. uh, maybe sooner. Of her uh, we could see, We could see, well, I think that she's likely to be forced out by her own party. A lot depends upon the decision-making uh, of the 1922 Committee of Backbenchers, who will ultimately decide her fate. If they decide to change the Conservative Party constitution uh, and hold uh, another uh, vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister, uh, then I think her fate would be sealed. This week, as we see EU member countries uh, nominate and send representatives to Brussels, um, what do you anticipate with the UK? And do you think it will tell us anything about the future of Brexit? Well, I think that uh, on the UK side, uh, you know, the biggest party that's going to emerge from the European parliamentary elections will be the Brexit party, which is headed by Nigel Farage, and they're expected to poll uh, anywhere from 35 to 40 percent of the vote. It could even be higher. Uh, and they will be the biggest block of British um, members of the European Parliament. Uh, and I think that uh, that says a great deal, that the British people are fed up with the, you know, the ruling political establishment. They've lost faith in the Conservative Party to, to deliver Brexit. Uh, they also uh, overwhelmingly reject the Labour Party, who are projected to do very badly in these European elections. As well, the only uh, party that is standing on a platform of reversing uh, Brexit, the, uh, the Liberal Democrats, are expected to get around 20% of the vote. Up next on Newsy, another exclusive, an issue near and dear to the hearts and wallets of millions of us. I'm with you. Student loan debt. Is it just par for the course, a fair cost of getting an education in the U.S.? Or should that debt be forgiven, the entire system reimagined and refunded?